When I was first getting into music, trombone's the first instrument that I learned how to play. And ever since then, I've always thought brass instruments sounded pretty awesome. But as great as brass instruments sound by themselves, sometimes music calls for them to have just a little bit more character. And that's commonly achieved in music by using mutes. Now I don't have all the different kinds of mutes that there are that are used for brass instruments, but I have some of the most common ones that are used. And if you know me, then you know I'm not just gonna tell you about these mutes and how they work, but I'm also gonna show you how they sound in a couple songs that I compose, so you can hear how they transform the sound of my trombone and trumpet. All right, let's go ahead and start with these two. What I have here is what's called a Harmon mute and a cup mute. Now, contrary to what the word mute might suggest, these don't actually cancel out the sound of brass instruments. They kind of just give it a different texture and timbre. And the way they do that is you stick them in the bell and they stay there with these cork type materials that are on the outside. Thin and raspy, I think, are the two words I use to describe how the harmon mute makes this trumpet sound. Which is funny because typically if you play a brass instrument, you get told your sound is thin and raspy. It's not usually a compliment. But I guess when you're going for this particular type texture with this mute, it actually sounds pretty nice. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a garbage truck outside. It's pretty loud. I think it's almost done. So I think the cut mute makes the trombone sound a little bit raspy as well, but more echoey than thin versus kind of how the harmon mute was more raspy and thin. Now while harmon and cut mutes are both made for trumpets and trombones, I currently have one harmon mute that's for trumpet and one cut mute that's for trombone. However, I think this temporary limitation I have right now actually causes me to be a little bit more creative. I find I usually end up blending the cut mute sound with the harmon mute sound to get a whole new blend of brass sound that I use. And uh, I think it sounds pretty cool. So now let's go over these last few mutes, including a very uh, special edition. Now these two cone-shaped ones here are called straight mutes, and I actually have one for trumpet and one for trombone. Well, technically this one for the trumpets, my sister-in-law's, she's letting me borrow it right now. Shout out to you, Lindsay. Dry and rustic. Yeah, I think those are the two words I would use to describe how these straight mutes make these brass instruments sound. But uh, I'll just go ahead and show you so you can hear. <laughs> Okay, it's finally time to address the elephant in the room. Yes, this is a toilet plunger. Now it's not exactly a mute like the other examples that we went through already, but it's used in a similar enough way that I wanted to include it. And I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, don't worry, I only use this for musical purposes. In fact, I actually don't even have a toilet plunger I use for my real toilet. I'm gonna make a trip to the store after this. Okay, anyway, so here's how the plunger works. Unlike the other mutes that we looked at, plunger doesn't exactly have that cork type material which helps it to stay inside the bell. So you have to designate one hand to kind of help it stay on top of the bell or in front of the bell. For trumpet, it's fairly simple. Given kind of how the instrument's constructed and the rings that your fingers can go through, you can hold it pretty easily with one hand. You just use your other hand and hold it in front of the instrument like this. Pretty simple. The trombone, however, yeah, it's a little bit more complex. You use one hand, your slide hand, to hold up the instrument like this, and while holding the instrument on your shoulder like you would normally, you kind of use your other hand to hold the rest of the instrument up like this. The instrument may move around a little bit just because, you know, you're moving the slide and everything, but eh, it's a balancing act you kind of get used to. 
And now, of course, initially you may think because there's no corks to help hold the plunger in place, well, doesn't that make it a more complicated mute? Mute. To use? Well, yes, but I think it also helps to give it its best feature. You get that kind of freedom of movement. <laughs> the example so far, I think this one's probably my favorite. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys on these mutes and well, plunger and how they're used for brass instruments and music. Comment which one of these ones was your favorite one to listen to and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future projects where I end up including them. All right, now time to go to the store and get a real plunger.